folks, I backed this and it funded April of 2019 and just arrived today. So I wanted to unbox it and show you what's up. Uh, it came with this little shopping bag. Uh, this is a party game of sorts. It's a deduction game. And it came with this, uh, I guess, sort of a grocery bag that you can tote the Grimlore around in. So uh, this is the Grimlore. It's it's made to look like a huge book. And whoever's running the game will be uh, handling this and working out the details. I'll, you'll see more in just a second. But you can use the... You can use the felt line box in here to kind of organize the game. So let's go ahead and get it open. You're going to have to bear with me today. <clears throat> Our family finally got COVID and uh, my voice is a little off, but uh, I'm bored as hell. So we're doing the unboxing. So in anticipation of receiving this game, I've been watching some playthroughs and No Rolled Sparred has the has really amazing playthroughs of this game. Of course, my wife has pointed out that uh I'm bound to be disappointed at this point because uh I'm never going to assemble a group of people that know how to play the game as well or are as uh, fascinating as the I don't know, they they seem like a bunch of theater kids or something. <laughs> And they're all uh, really uh, energetic and uh, interesting to watch. It's a great way to kind of learn the rules to this game. also saw the review from uh, Board Game Co. that really didn't have a very good time trying to play this at a convention. And uh, I, honestly, I can understand why just from trying to understand this game. This might be better off for like a house party than a convention. Although I see people running it at conventions all the time. Uh, of course, here's the inside of this box. You can see it's felt lined. Uh, we'll test this out in just a minute. But uh, that is how you keep track of the tokens. The, a lot of the tokens are felt lined too. It came with these plastic uh, sheets. They're, they kind of seem like sleeves. And I, I bet that they are sleeves for some of the handouts. Although I'm, I'm not certain uh, which ones they're actually intended to go on. So uh, I just set them aside for now. Now here on top we have uh, my first set of felt line tokens, and these tokens are uh, the Kickstarter extras. Uh, so if there is a retail version of this game, and I don't know if there is, and I apologize that that's upside down. So if eventually there is a retail version of the game, it probably won't include this. And here, uh, although I've got two together, I didn't realize at first. Uh, I'm testing out the punch and it seems to be okay they punch out really easily uh, i did find a couple of the tabs uh, across the whole game i i only had one that had kind of a paper rip and it wasn't um it wasn't one of the felt line ones now i did have uh the very smallest of these uh felt line thing and there you can see uh how the felt works it doesn't move uh, you can hold the thing almost vertically and they don't fall down. It's kind of like a soft Velcro. Uh, I did have one of the uh, the very, very small tokens rip on me. But uh, I just kind of pushed it back together and it was fine. So uh, overall, good quality. I think that it might be tricky to do these cuts with the felt on the back. But uh, for the most part, everything punched out just fine in the end. So here I'm pulling this part out, and inevitably I'm thinking, oh my god, am I going to have to read all that? <laughs> but what this is, um, once I get it open, these are little cheat sheets to hand out for each scenario that describe... Uh, so in this game, there there are all these different roles that people can be, and uh, these cheat sheets kind of give descriptions of all the different roles. And there are different ones... Uh, for each different adventure and I think some of them cross over as well. This did come with four different scenarios uh, that you can play. I'm not sure if the Kickstarter extras actually add something else or not and uh, this is really super handy so people aren't going to know what the other person is so they need to know all the all the different roles and uh, all the different possibilities for those. So those cheat sheets are essential for uh for an adventure so we've got a couple of these draw bags uh, as you can see very easy to get your hands inside and 
Uh, I'm not sure why there are two. Maybe it might be another Kickstarter extra to get this extra bag. And it was kind of hard to see, so I pulled out my light so you can see the, the, the picture stitched onto the front of this one. Very nice looking little bag. Uh, it also had this thing of tokens. Uh, these are just regular cardboard tokens, and I am not certain uh, what their purpose is. I uh, still need to read the rules and stuff, and I tried to follow up on the updates the best I could, but this game drug out for a long time. In fact, uh, yeah, it closed April 25th of 2019. It made $573,000 in, uh, well, $573,621. It had 6,434 backers. And, uh, yeah, this was something that uh, I've been watching for a long, long time. It was my oldest Kickstarter that hadn't delivered, uh, and I was thrilled when it finally arrived. So inside of here, we also have tuck boxes, and these little tuck boxes are going to be uh, used to store the tokens for the specific scenarios, and we'll get into all those tokens in just a minute. You'll see that the inside of the boxes are labeled to kind of help you organize and, and know what goes in, in what spot. And that helped a little bit. <laughs> I eventually did figure out the system for this, but uh, like I said, I haven't been following up on the updates uh, very much. I've just uh, been kind of passively watching over the past few years, uh, especially when something's really late. I think it's easier sometimes to just ignore it and kind of hope it arrives soon. Now, over the past couple of weeks, like I said, I've been watching videos. Oh, oh, here's a, this is a stand. So the Grimlor uh, can be stood up on a table or something for the person that's running the game and make it a little easier so you don't have to carry it around necessarily. So that's kind of neat. I think there's another piece to this too. I didn't quite understand it, what I was looking at when I pulled it out of the box here. And I'm pointing out that it's embossed there. It's really nice, uh, sturdy stand. But there's another part to it uh, as we go further in. Now, this are the uh, this is the set of tokens for all the different scenarios for the four different scenarios. And uh, the way they're set up, every two panels is basically one scenario. Uh, I didn't, uh, I figured this out when I was trying to organize it. You'll see that in a minute. But you could, you've got your kind of your good side and your bad side on these uh, token things. And, and they're, they're very similar. Like uh, you could tell they use the same die cut for each one of these and uh, maybe just change the pictures that were on them. So you have, of course, the different tokens for all the different people so what you'll do is as people sit around the room and as people get assigned roles uh in your little book you can just kind of take those tokens and place them uh place them in sort of a, a logical way in a circle or something so you know who is where and then you can use other little reminders and different tokens and stuff to mark like if someone's been poisoned or someone's been uh someone casts a spell on another person, someone does something that affects another person, you can just take these felt tokens and put them next to the different roles. And you can arrange those roles by the way people are sitting around the room and stuff. So it makes it really easy to kind of keep track of who's who and what's what and play with a large group of people. I think that's always a challenge with games like this is that uh, there's so many people involved. Uh, organizing it can be kind of difficult. This is another one of those games, too, where everybody closes their eyes at one point and then things happen. Things happen at night. So uh, it's really handy to have that to organize. So here at the bottom of the box, we've got a few other things. We've got more of these player aids. And uh, I noticed that these player aids, uh, some of them were specific for the scenario, probably a setup for the scenario. Maybe something that's different or goes beyond the basic setup, like little extra things you might do for each of those scenarios. Uh, I have read none of this, so I'm not, I'm only going by headers and stuff at this point. And uh, I see here is like a general setup for the game. And it looks like pretty clear, easy to read instructions. 
I really like that they make these little these little call out things. So you're not you know in the rule book right away trying to figure things out. It's also got kind of a rules explanation. I could see maybe handing this out to that person that wants to just read it for themselves, um, or it might teach how to you know how to teach the game and stuff. Uh, the person running the game is going to have to know it really well. Uh, the rest of the people, I'm not so sure. I think they really just need to know their roles. Uh, here's the rule book. It looks pretty, uh, pretty well laid out. I really liked the art. Of course, without reading it, I don't have uh, don't have a great opinion about how uh, you know how well it's laid out or anything like that. But I did find the art to be really appealing, and it was printed nice and clear. I didn't see didn't see anything that looked uh, looked appalling right off the bat, except that there's a whole lot of reading to do. So I guess I'll knuckle into this eventually you know i think that this game would be excellent for um, maybe a theater improv group or something like that as an exercise and uh, although it seems like it can be complicated with all the different roles and stuff those little cheat sheets could be copied and sent out well in advance to a party and uh, i i think that that would make a huge difference uh, as far and Really, after the first game, maybe two games, probably just the first game, I think after that, you would be well on your way to really being able to play this uh, effectively and even switch between different scenarios and stuff without causing a lot of confusion. Like I said, I bet you could share those little cheat sheets out ahead of time. I, I, I haven't looked for myself, but I'm sure that there's a PDF somewhere of all these different roles. Someone has made a uh, a sheet for that. So you can maybe go, hey, we're gonna play Trouble Brewing this weekend and uh, send out this thing to all your friends and let them read over the potential roles that are involved. Now, looking through each of these scenario books, uh, I was looking for kind of a page number here. It looks like they're about 20 pages long or so, and all of them seem to be about the same thickness but we've got all these uh, scenario books, I guess, for specific scenarios. So, um, yeah, and there's a lot here. I, I don't think if you were going to take this, if you're going to take this baby to someone's house, I, I imagine what you would do is pull out uh, the specific scenario you want, and leave the others at home. So in the bottom of the box, we I encountered these two things. Now, I'm still not sure what this is, and be sure to leave me a note in the comments and let me know. Uh, but this is like a thick piece of cardboard with the artwork on it. It's kind of like the box front, exactly like the box front, but but it doesn't have... Uh, I, I'm not sure what its purpose is. So I just kind of uh, put it back in the bottom of the box. Uh, the other thing too, I think goes with the stand. So this part here, that goes with the stand. And I believe that that fits on top of this thing. Uh, although I haven't set, I don't sit here in the video and put it together, but obviously these two parts go together. And it's, it's probably just to make it a wider surface and a little bit steadier. And that's all there is for this box. That's, that's all the stuff in here. But wait, maybe not. See, I found hidden in one of these tuck boxes a few other items, and let's pull those out real quick. I only actually know what one of these items is, <laughs> so uh, let's take a quick look. So here we have what looks like a it looks like a page marker or something. I'm really not sure what it is, um, but they're they're plastic, and they're about two bags of these things. And uh, I just kind of put it back in the bag and set it aside and made a note to myself to look that up later. Uh, the other thing we have here are little clips. And uh, these are just basic office, you know, basic office supply clips. And the purpose is to hold the Grimlor together. So when you pull the Grimlor apart, you can attach it to the sides there and those little clamps will keep the book together and make it seem more like a, a book that has a spine and stuff versus two box lids. So I figured out that the tuck boxes probably held the tokens. And uh, then I just had to identify what those tokens were. Uh, looking through any of the scenario books, you can kind of see which tokens go with which scenario. And with that, I, I understood that, uh, thankfully, I hadn't gotten them out of order 
when I put the tokens aside, I kind of kept them in order. And each each two sheets of those tokens went with one of these books. And it kind of seemed like one side was a bunch of uh, good guy stuff and one side was a bunch of bad guy stuff. So I used that knowledge to take all the tokens and get them sorted out into the boxes. I did this for all of the tuck boxes. I wasn't entirely sure what each token did uh, for the different things. And it seemed like, but most of them seemed really straightforward and it wasn't a big deal. And there's not so many that I can't like dump one of these individual tuck boxes in there and like resort it uh, once I understand the particulars of that game a little better. Eventually we get to the Kickstarter exclusive ones. Uh, these didn't have a tuck box or anything and I, I wasn't sure how to organize these at all. Uh, I did the safest thing I could think of is just to take those and bag them up individually. So I just threw them in some extra bags that I had around. I did one bag for each of the different panels. That way uh, I could go back and figure this out later on. I also had these cardboard uh, these cardboard things. I couldn't really tell a difference between these. I mean, um, almost all of them look the same. There was one, there's one that's a little bit different. See that one in the middle is like a little bit different color than the others. Other than that, all the circular parts are the same and those big red and the, the panel at the end was unique. So I just put all of those together so now it's time to pack it away. I decided just to kind of organize everything by size and then just kind of made sense to tuck all these little baggies and all these extra little things around the corner there to kind of make it an even playing field. And uh, then the tuck boxes go really neatly on top and the rules, uh, I left the setup stuff, the setup and the, and the rules explanation and all that stuff, I left it kind of towards the top as well as the stand for the Grimlore. I thought that might be handy to pull out first along with a rule book and all the setup stuff so all that stuff goes right on top and then it's all packed up and that's been the blood on the clock tower unboxing hopefully hopefully i get around to playing this game at some point um as i sit here sick it's hard to imagine <laughs> <laughs> that I'll eventually be able to be out in public again, but it'll happen. It'll happen, and uh, I look forward to seeing it. Now, I did notice that there's a little bit of creep. Uh, that might be the reason that they added the sleeve on here was to kind of help keep this box together, especially with all the extra stuff in it. So uh, you'll probably need that if you don't want your little box to kind of work its way out. But with that sleeve on it, it's nice and tidy in there. Uh, everything closed just fine. And that's it. Blood on the clock tower. But that's all I got for you today. Enjoy your games, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.